Hello, this is Kenanigan from RagingReptilian.com. Today we are going to be talking about Jesus Christ, or Jesus of Nazareth, and there's a reason I'm saying Nazareth. Before I get into anything, this is not a theological lecture. I'm not a theologian. I am an occult researcher. My main focus is what happened to Jesus after he was crucified at Golgotha, and we're going to talk about that. But before I do... Just to let people know, yes, I was born Catholic. I love Jesus. I love God. I am not a pagan. I despise pagans. So before we get into anything, I'm going to read you a nice pretty poem from a woman. Yeah, this is who we're talking about here. Who is Jesus Christ? Yeah. We're going to talk. Um, I had mentioned that what spurred me to make this video was my investigation into the Mithra Full Cults of Rome, which is going to be the follow-up video I do for this tomorrow. So what poem am I reading? Yes, Footprints in the Sand by Mary Fishback. Um, Footprints in the Sand. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints, other times there was only one. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could only see one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, You promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during most trying periods of my life, there have only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? The Lord replied, The years when you have only seen one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. Yeah, I love that poem. How could you not as a Christian, right? Yeah, and I hold no qualms about being Catholic or Christian. Because unlike most people... Now we're getting into lecture here. There, there's not going to really be any links for this video. I'm shooting off the cuff. And I'm going to give you three versions of what possibly happened after the crucifixion of Jesus. I'm worried more about what happened afterwards. We all have our different theories on it. But I'm going to show you also how the, the true gospel of Jesus was plagiarized by Rome itself and the Pharisees, the Jews... I'm going to make a video about the Pharisees. They're their own subject. They're the ones that gave us such texts as Babylonian Talmud, the one that's been banned from my channel. It's on my Patreon, though, a documentary about Talmud. Scrolling down here, because there's another thing I want to read you. Disciple in the footprints of Jesus. Too often we settle for weak, tepid, vanilla version of Christianity. Many Christians are content to allow the truths of the faith to rest at surface level. Too many of us are complacent in our faith, but we're not called to half-hearted obedience. We're called to Christ-likeness. We're called to maturity. We are called to be disciples. Yeah. I'm not going to question anyone's faith or what you believe. I know what the Catholic Church and Christianity teaches about the life of Jesus, even after his resurrection. But I have some theories about that. First of all, the Vatican, who, I've already made videos about the Jesuits in Vatican. In fact, I got myself in trouble recently talking about the Jesuits. And we know that they are not reliable people when it comes to real human history, the real life of Jesus. And Romans were very proud of their pantheon of gods. Um, so, What I'm about to tell you, some people might equate this to zeitgeist. I don't want to hear that. Do not relate me to that documentary. I have my own opinions about that. I believe they plagiarized a lot of Jordan Maxwell's work in that, and they give credit for it. But, no, this is not zeitgeist. Because I am going to give you a lecture tomorrow on the cult of Mithra, where this comes from. This is really important. What is Mithra? Mithra is the Roman god of the sun. Born of a virgin. Mithra was actually born on December 25th. He had 12 disciples. That's symbolic of the signs of the Zodiac. Performed miracles. Was dead for three days. Resurrected and had Sunday worship. And he's also a Persian god also. Don't worry. We're going to talk about Mithra tomorrow. Let's go back to Jesus. I'm going to show you a few things here. 
This is called Gatha. Call that a mud fossil, if you will. But yes, that is a skull in the side of that. This is the place where Jesus Christ was crucified. We know what's the story. He's crucified. He's condemned by the Pharisees. They are not the real Jews. The Pharisees, like I said, I'll make a separate video about the Pharisees in the future. But it was actually the Romans who crucified him. Pontius Pilate symbolically washing his hands. After he died on the cross, Jesus, now I don't know if any of you have ever seen this, this is the tomb that Jesus was put into, in Jerusalem. You can actually go visit this tomb. You can go here in the Holy Land and lay in the tomb where Jesus Christ actually was laid to rest. And this is where he resurrected three days later. This is what the tomb looked like. This wheel, this round wheel right here would have been rolled into place. Now the tomb that he was put into was an unfinished tomb. It was meant for a family. Oh wait, I didn't pull up the images, sorry. Kenny pulls up a lot of links for videos and sometimes uh, <laughs> this, what you're looking at right there is the actual spot where Jesus, Jesus Christ's body laid after he was crucified. What's the story in Christianity? We know he rises on the third day and but we don't hear too much after that. There's there's different theories. He's immortal. He's he's reincarnated. Well, yeah, that's good in theory. But I have another theory, and I'm going to give you three possible ones. Um, the first one that's well known is after the third day he arises, he's born again, and walks the earth. But we don't get much of a story after that, do we? And if technically, if he was the son of God channeled into the body and yes I believe Jesus Christ was a real person and was really crucified at this spot and then you know he leaves but there's something weird to this where are the true teachings of Jesus the actual word of Jesus now yes as a Catholic and as a Christian I am very aware that the closest thing you can get to the actual teachings of Jesus although they are not verbatimly quoted out of his mouth is the book of Matthew specifically and this is really important for the second version I'm going to give you where Jesus Christ teaches and this was even in Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ about loving your enemies because what reward is there in hating them hence the Vatican the pagans Rome Rome figured after conquest that they were going to hijack the teachings of Christ and Christianity and ruled the world over Catholicism. So when they came to, say for example, the New World, America, how many people know, know that the United States, where we are right here, was actually called Turtle Island at one time when it was first found? I've made videos on my channel showing that Egyptians were trading in the Americas before it was known because they found different residues of things from only South America in Egyptian mummies, such as tobacco and cocaine, and we have the mysterious Egyptian ruins in the Grand Canyon. I've covered that. Now, could it be possible? So, the point I'm making, when we came to the New World, they used missionaries under the guise of Spain. Spain and Rome have very close connections. If you don't know, the Roman sword that the legions use is called a gladius. That is a, that is a Spanish short sword we have a Spanish Pope Borgia I made a video about him and there's a TV series I watched the Borgias about the Renaissance era 14th century in the Vatican and yes we've had Spanish black nobility in the Vatican also you'll find out tomorrow why bullfighting is so prized in Spain we'll get to that tomorrow because Mithra is going to be a pretty long lecture this one I don't need to go on too long for so we have another theory. There's two theories that I have here. One, his body was taken out of this tomb and moved somewhere. Where it was moved to, I'll disclose in a second. And I, and I have some proof for that. Why would they move his body? It's simple. Um, could you imagine if you had like the body of Buddha, Muhammad, or Jesus Christ? And what's really interesting is... Um, 
studying Zen, the teachings of Jesus Christ fall more in line with the teachings of Buddha of anyone. But it would be uh, detrimental to that religion, especially in the Holy Land now, you know, where it's predominantly inhabited by Muslims and Jews, and Christians only make up a small percentage of the Holy Land now. In fact, it's quite dangerous to be a Christian over there. So, the theory is he didn't resurrect. He still is the Son of God, and the second time he returns is covered in the book of Revelation. We don't need to go there. That's when he when the Antichrist rises to power in Jerusalem, sits on the seat of the temple, and deceives the Jewish people, and then we have seven years of tribulation followed by the return of Christ. Okay? Now, there is something here. You know what? I need to show you this. Before we go on, what are the two Gospels of the Bible we have? We have King James Version of the Bible. King James Bible. Yeah, I use DuckDuckGo because it's much better than Google. Because you'll notice when I search on DuckDuckGo, it takes me right to. Um, let's go to Wikia because there's something I need to show you about the King James Version of the Bible. And that's sadly where we have the book of Matthew. Now the Bible was heavily edited by the Council of Ensea, if anyone doesn't know that. The books of Jasher, which I covered on this channel, and I haven't covered the book of Enoch yet. I will one day. That's a long text. And the reason why is the books of Jasher and the books of Enoch were taken out of the thing because they de definitely go into serpent worship. However, King James, the Freemason have their own version of the Bible. It was also written by King James. Do you notice something about this? This is the original artwork from King James. It looks very Masonic, doesn't it? Yes, because it, it is Masonic. Not only was King James a king, tied in with um, nobility and royalty, but look at this. This is, you see the sun and the moon, and this is, that is Masonic. I don't care. And it's kind of, look at, this is, you don't get any more Masonic than this. You even have, look. <laughs> um, right. So King James, it was a collection of books that I believe the Vatican gave to King James to put together the New Testament. They wanted to get people off the Old Testament. So we have a New Testament. It was put together by pagans, Luciferians. The Old Testament, which was originally translated from Hebrew. We get the books of Genesis and all that stuff, which correlates a lot with Sumerian texts, which I am an expert in ancient Sumeria. Yes, it was hijacked from the seven tablets of creation from Sumeria. Where are the teachings that were actually taught by Jesus? Here's where the second theory comes. Well, the third. There's going to be three theories here. Kind of the occult power of three and Jesus being and rising on the third day. Not saying that he didn't resurrect after three days. He could have. But the second theory is the body was moved. By who? Not sure. But in the third theory, I believe... What happens is it may not, or it may or may not have been three days that Jesus resurrects. And what is the first thing that Jesus does when he resurrects out of this tomb? And there is actually some mythology going around this. So when he comes up out of this tomb, many pagans out there, many people in modern life, what would be the first thing you would want to do if you resurrected from the dead after being brutally tortured by the Roman legions, condemned to be crucified? Would you want revenge? Or did Jesus Christ find those Roman legions, redeem them, forgave them for what they did, and passed on his teachings to them? There's a theory that an order came out of this, known as the possibly the order of the seraphim. And they, with Jesus, left the Holy Land. But where did they go? And what did Jesus teach them? This text has been mocked because it's been theorized. The Gospel of Nazarenes. Right, that's not in our New Testament. What is the Gospel of Nazarene? Supposedly, it's the true word of Jesus Christ. Not only is it the true word of Jesus Christ, but this Gospel quite possibly contains stuff that would be detrimental to the Vatican and Catholicism and all Christianity 
because it would be detrimental to the business end of religion, the church. And when the New World, when, you know, the Spanish settlers came here and the English settlers, they were, that was Rome. That was Rome taking over the New World or Turtle Island. And just like in ancient times at Rome, when they conquered the new land, you had to pay them tribute, give them slaves, you were allowed to still worship your pantheon of gods. But then Rome said, we can't conquest the whole world like this anymore, so we're going we're gonna to do it under the guise of Catholicism, hence the Vatican, hence moving the, the capital to Constantinople in Turkey. That's its own story in itself. So I believe Jesus actually gave this order, um, and this order was probably made up of the same Romans that engaged in the crucifying of him, and they were probably blown away by how he resurrected from the dead and actually forgave them for his sins, because it was long al along the lines of some of the t things that were taught in the book of Matthew. So this order of the seraphim, and it probably, one, contains the the theory that God and Jesus and God being one and that is in the book of Matthew God is everywhere you don't need a church to worship him he's under every rock he's in every flower he's in every little living thing to reiterate on that what if you know in my own theory what if the Big Bang Theory was God spreading his consciousness all throughout the universe in every living particle and atom pretty interesting isn't it that means that God is everywhere. He's here. He's on Mars. He's in the sun. He's in the rocks. He's in the flowers. He's in all living things. And you don't... Now, I will give this disclaimer. I have nothing wrong with people in, in neighborhoods who want to get together and worship together on Sunday, at, come together as communities and worship Jesus, worship God. If they're doing it, it's not the people who get together in the communities and come together on Sunday and worship. I actually think that's great for communities. In fact, I hate to say, but a lot of churches are, and even Catholic churches, are closing down. Um, less and less people are going to church, and that's hence the rise of Satanism, falling in lines again with the book of Revelation. This was already predicted. Who is behind all this? Well, Albert Pike, 33-degree Freemason, said that he created the atheistic movement so if you say you are godless or you don't believe in Jesus um, that's actually a design by the Masons themselves and the Luciferians Anton LaVey the founder of the Church of Satan it's rumored that on his deathbed he sought redemption through Jesus Christ for all the sins he did because he didn't want to go to hell and boil in hot excrement in the lake of fire yeah so if you think that you're atheist because you just don't want to practice religion like I said you know if um if you know I figured if I probably went to church um for the past three years I probably wouldn't have been single now I probably would have found a good woman by now a good catholic woman so catholics are fun when I was a kid we used to get drunk and then go to church on Sunday catholic priests in uh the city Irish catholic priests especially yeah they're, believe me they party also it's fun. And there was, like I said, there was nothing wrong with communities getting together and preaching. But where is the gospel of Nazarene? And where was the body of Jesus taken? I'm going to tell you something right here that's going to just maybe blow people away. This is a building in, of all places, Ethiopia. This is called the Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion. In this church... They have the Ark of the Covenant, and it's guarded by a priest who is only allowed to see it. No one is allowed to go in his church, and they claim to house the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai in, in Ethiopia, of all places. Some other strange things in Ethiopia, dealing with Christianity. And why Ethiopia? Well, this used to be known as the land of Punt, and it used to trade heavily with Egypt. In fact, e Ethiopia has a lot of Egyptian, Egyptian obelisks in it, and a lot of Egyptian from ancient times. But why Ethiopia? Well, did you ever know that there was such a big Christian presence in Ethiopia, or Catholic even? Because they wanted to hide from Rome and the Vatican, the true teachings of Jesus, and Jesus, quite possibly the body of Jesus. 
It's been rumored that there is a grave somewhere in Ethiopia marked with the name Emmanuel. Even if Jesus resurrected and lived out the rest of his life, let's say, um, you know, he came into that body as conscious. He has the Christ conscious was put into a human body, obviously. He was mortal, or else he wouldn't have been able to be crucified and die for three days, right? You have to agree with that. He bled when the Romans whipped him. He wasn't a superhero, but he still was the son of God. And he would have had to live out the rest of his, his life. So let's say he did live out the rest of his life. Where is the body of the older Jesus? And what happened to Jesus in his older times? Did he give his true teachings to the order of the Nazarene? I have a theory that the Knights Templar, of all people, besides trying to look for the Holy Grail, which they claim they buried on Oak Island, uh, if you want to really know what's o on Oak Island, all you need to do is decode Rosalind Chapel in Scotland. I'll make a video about Rosalind Chapel in the future. Because the Masons coded it in there. Well, the Knights Templar. I also believe that the Knights Templar were engaged in hunting down these Order of the Seraphim and the Nazarenes because of how detrimental it would have been to the Vatican and the true teachings of Jesus, which probably would have negated everything that Rome has been doing. Not with the Gospels of the um, put together by King James. Not with the uh, history of um, you know that's taught in the Old Testaments and all that, like the Book of Numbers and Exodus with Moses and all that. But the things that would have been detrimental towards the Church of all things, and how to actually worship God and what Jesus was actually teaching. We don't have a verbatim book right from Jesus's mouth. And I believe that is what is in the Gospel of the Na Nazarene. And I believe those teachings are being hidden somewhere in Ethiopia. Now, why Ethiopia? Yeah, I realize I, smelled, I spelled that wrong there. <laughs> Take out the typos. What are we looking at? These are some of the stone churches. Yes, they are carved right out of stone that are in Ethiopia. And if you notice, they're submerged below ground. Like they're hiding them. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, did you know this? And these are all sacred holy places. And these are carved right into the rock. They were hiding. I believe one, the real Israelites may have led here. The real Jews. Which is uh, a little controversial. Yes, Ethiopia has a long history. At one time, this was a very powerful like empire here. Now, like, let's say in the 90s, it was equated with starving children and flies. Well, flies, first of all, are a symbol of Satan. Did you know that? I have a book called... Yes, I believe it's either the Amityville Horror or the Exorcist. I have, I'm looking at the two books right in front of me. One of those books, as you go through the chapters on the page, fly, uh, flies are actually drawn on the chapter beginnings and it's pretty spooky and as you go through the book and it gets more evil the more flies are present on the page and um, I, I look back and I think of Ethiopia in the 90s you think of just starving children in the middle of the desert and they're all living in poverty it's kind of true for the most part now this is a war torn place ISIS was just over here of all people slaughtering Christians and who does ISIS work for on behalf of the Jesuits the Vatican the Talmudic Jews, we know that. And why are they persecuting Christians? Because they're trying to bring in the kingdom of Lucifer. So, of course, they don't want the true teachings of Jesus out. And like I said, you can knock Jesus all you want, but when you have someone who's sick or dying in your family, you pray to the Lord that they get healthy. When, you, when you're on your own deathbed, you're going to seek redemption through God and Christ. I don't care who you are. Even Anton LaVey did it, founder of the Church of Satan. Most Luciferians and pagans walk around pompous most of their lives until they really need to call on the power of something bigger than them. Or they realize they screwed up all life by being a pagan because they thought it was cool to go ride the goat and learn witchcraft. Please. I also believe that those teachings that are in the book of Nazarene would go against our whole monetary system. Do you think Jesus would have taught people to print money and put people into debt slavery? And the Catholic Church uh, supposedly wants 10% of your income when you're a Catholic. See, if I went to church as a Catholic, I, uh, they're not getting 10% of my income. I'd give, throw a few bucks in the donation plate, but please, they're not getting 10% of my income every week. 
They used to at one time. Do you think Jesus would have allowed the Spanish Inquisition, the, the uh, torture that went on in the Church of England of all places? Yes. If you were a heretic, you got tortured right out in public. Do you think Jesus condoned that? The same Jesus that possibly forgave and redeemed the, the same Roman legions who whipped them and crucified them? I don't think so. So what did Rome do? And I'm going to kind of sum this up here. Well, they wanted to besmirch the teachings of Jesus. And Romans wanted to, and as they always do, they take their own gods and they put their own spin on our, you know. We don't have gods. We don't have a pantheon. Pantheon is for pagans. It's a collection of gods. We have one god, monotheism. And Jesus. And we get to Mithra. Like I said, I'm... Don't equate me to Zeitgeist on this. And yes, this is sun worship. And yes, the reason why there are 365 days in a year and only 360 degrees in a circle is because on the 22nd of December, our sun in the solar system dies. It loses one degree in the night sky and it is reborn again on the 25th. Hence, Mithra may not even be a real person. It's just a reference to the sun and they're equating it to um, the cycles of the sun throughout the year, hence why we have 365 days in a year, but only 360 degrees in a circle. The zeitgeist didn't come up with that, please. They plagiarized a lot of people. Would have been nice if they gave credit to um, who they actually plagiarized. So, it's quite possible that we have this gospel of Nazarene out there. Jesus, or Emmanuel, is possibly buried in Ethiopia. Ethiopia already claims at the Mary Church of Lady Mary of Zion, the most, and you can't get in this church either. It's well guarded. There's only one priest that's allowed to look at the oath of Co the Ark of the Covenant. He takes a vow for life to guard it inside that church, and he's rarely ever seen. He ever rarely ever comes out. I believe also there was a few other things going on in ancient times with Rome and the Jews. Why was why were Jews put under protection of Rome after they just crucified Jesus, but then suddenly we had the Vatican, and now the Romans are the founding force behind Catholicism when they crucified the Son of God? Were they redeeming themselves? Please. No, they weren't. Some of the religious artifacts that dealt with that day, the crucifix, the spear of destiny that actually punctured the heart of Jesus by the Roman legions, the nails used for the crucifixion, the only thing that we have left that is from that time is the actual tomb. Good luck getting to this tomb. Here's the inside again. It's it's actually sealed off now. You, At one time, you see there's gates in here now. At one time, you could have actually went in this tomb and laid down right where Jesus did. But um, I wouldn't recommend going to the Holy Land right now. It's called the Garden Tomb in Israel. There's a reason why these sites, these holy sites, are in third, well, I wouldn't call Israel a third world country, but it's a definitely a violent country. It's not a safe place for pilgrims to go. I wouldn't recommend doing it. I believe the Knights Templar were involved in hunting down these lost teachings of Jesus, the Nazarene. Where did they sit now? The Vatican Archives. That's probably, and it was probably the Vatican Archives that gave uh, King James what he needed to put together the New Testament. And that's when they also sent it out, the Book of Enoch and the Book of Jasher because of the serpent uh, worship that was present in Book of Enoch is another subject. Long story short, this was what happened. SPQR, that is the Senate and Peoples of the Republic of Roma. And you know what? No one actually ever knew or figured out what the Q and SPQR actually stands for. It's been theorized, but no, they're no one's ever figured it out yet. It's kind of weird. So Rome, they uh, what they did was they took the te the story of Jesus during the crucifixion. They mixed it with the Mithra mythology. This is why we celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December. We know Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. No, um, didn't happen. Um. The other thing that's very interesting about the 25th of December, Jesus was equated as being a Pisces in mythology. That comes from Maxwell because a lot of the New Testament is based around astrotheology. 
He was the water sign. Uh, this is why Jesus was equated with the fish. It, we were also in the age of um, Pisces at the time. He was the Messiah of the age of Pisces. Then we came into the era, age of Aquarius, December 21st, 2012. If he was born on the 25th of December, that would have made him a Capricorn. And what is the sign of the Capricorn? Well, it's a goat. Yes, that is the zodiac sign of Capricorn, of all things. Do we uh, think of a goat when we think of Jesus? No. Think of a lamb, quite possibly. We've heard of, um, you know, the Catholicism is heavily embedded into uh, Dagon worship, which is the fish god, dealing with maritime law. Do you think God or Jesus would have endorsed Uniform Commercial Code and British Admiralty Maritime Law and commerce that basically puts us all into slet de uh, debt slavery? No. Do you think he would have endorsed the Spanish Inquisition, the torture of Christians, well, heretics, as they call them, a heretic. You could be labeled a heretic. I would have been labeled as a heretic in those times and tortured. And yes, they really did. If you're noticing all the Indian women up here, I looked into it. Yes, Mithra is apparently a popular Indian name now, too. That's why all these um, <laughs> women came up when I typed in Mithra. So, long story short, it was Rome who hijacked the, the true teachings of this. I believe that there is a gospel out there called the Gospel of Nazarene or the Gospel of Jesus. It was protected possibly by an order known as the Order of the Seraphim. They were quite possibly hunted down by the Knights Templar. I believe that I'm definitely doing my, um, more research into Ethiopia of all places. I cover a lot of places all around the planet. Everyone knows that. I can make I've made videos covering China, Japan, <laughs> uh, so many. How many countries are there around the world? Uh, and how many pantheons of gods do I cover? A lot. My. Uh, ancient and occult knowledge is pretty diverse and I still have a lot I am only just beginning I've only been doing this a decade and I think I'm putting more pieces of the puzzle together than most people that have been doing this for many decades uh, my subs know that and uh, so this is kind of my theory on the possibilities of what happened to the body of Jesus or Jesus after the crucifixion until he returns uh, to dethrone the Antichrist but I say we don't let the Antichrist go into power at all. To me, and I'm going to end the video with this, uh, I'm skeptical of prophecies because I believe that the future can be changed. When you say, like, the book of Revelation, I, I believe, was put there by the pagans themselves to scare us, you know, because they want to bring in the New World Order, which is the full universal doctrine of Lucifer, as per Albert Pike. I believe if we want to find the real answers to what happened to Jesus, what really is going on with Catholicism and Christianity, what the true teachings of Jesus are, I believe we need to aim our sight not at the Holy Land, but at Ethiopia. Um, do some research in Ethiopia. These people have strong, very strong Christian ties. And they, these rock churches I'm showing you here, these were built for a reason. There's a tomb in Ethiopia, let's see if we can find it, called the Tomb of Adam, of all places. Nate, how do you explain that? The Tomb of Adam? Yes, and I believe there's a few other tombs in Ethiopia. And these rock churches, look at this. This is not, people think of churches and Catholicism. You ever think of Ethiopia, of all places? But... Destruction by design. You try to go to Ethiopia now, it is dangerous. It is very dangerous there. I wouldn't recommend doing it. But there are some very sacred sites that were hidden here. Now, a lot of these rock churches, I think some of them have been abandoned for the original purposes, but doesn't mean what they housed or contained wasn't moved, or they didn't have something. And it's... I can't find links for it. I spent a few days, but no. Supposedly, there is a tomb in Ethiopia somewhere called Emmanuel, and that's where the, the real... I wouldn't doubt that their body... If, let's say, Jesus was a real person, he did resurrect and lived out his life, and he died, you know, of old age or whatever. Where's the body? You know, 
That's that's a good question. I believe it. I believe it was taken out of the Holy Land for a reason. Or when Jesus, if he did arise after three days, he left the Holy Land for a good reason. And I believe he took some people he redeemed, named them the Order of the Seraphim, and taught him the real Word of God, the one that's not presently in our Christian Bibles. But don't let that deter you from going to church as and coming together as a community. Because let me tell you something. Nobody believes in Jesus Christ more than the Luciferians themselves because everything they do is sacrilegious. And you're not allowed to mention the word Jesus in a Freemason lodge. You're not allowed to mention the word Jesus in the Mormon temple. There are no depictions of Jesus in the Mormon temple. There are no crucifixes in the Mormon temple. I've been in a Protestant church with a girl I dated who was an Eastern star trying to get me to convert from Catholicism to Protestant because I found out Protestant for Irish people is they want you to be Protestant because it's more of the Masonic religion. Why do they fear Catholics so much? Why have the teachings of Catholic? We know that I don't need a lecture on Vatican. If anyone's not familiar with my work and you're just watching this video, just go to my recent uploads in the past two weeks, starting with the occult power of the Vatican, the Jesuit oath, and I made another video on the Jesuits, and I exposed the Vatican and the Jesuits. So... And now I'm exposing what I believe actually happened to the real Jesus Christ. I don't, obviously his name, his real name probably wasn't Jesus Christ. Could have been Emmanuel. We don't know. Could have been Jesus. Um, now, people that have been following my work and want to know where I'm going at this with the cult of myth over Rome, hang in for that lecture tomorrow. It's going to blow your mind. I'm going to show you the significance of the bull cults in Rome. And how Rome, of all people, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to start talking, I don't want to be smart talking about Jesus with Roman paganism. I don't, even though it is tied together, we'll talk about Mithra tomorrow. So there's really no links to leave in the description. Uh, remember, this is who rules the world under the guise of Catholicism. So, and uh, Golgotha. If you've never seen the actual skull of Golgotha and the tomb of Jesus, they're, they're right on Google. Just type in tomb of Jesus and Golgotha. That is the tomb right there in the garden tomb. Um... And actually, I agree with him being taken, or his body taken out of the Holy Land and hidden for obvious reasons. We don't want it in the control of pagans. Um, how do we know what's in the Vatican archives, secondly? For all we know, what did the Templars really... You know, it's not just the Ark of the Covenant um, that the Templars were hunting down. They were, they were hunting down or trying to control something. I believe it was the Gospel of Nazarene, the true teachings of Jesus, which is also been under attack it's pretty, you know there's there's no more attacked religion on the world than Catholicism or Christianity and ask yourself the questions why right I don't give that many biblical lectures people know that but I can't ignore the facts and when I it all ties in when it starts tying in with paganism the Vatican the Jesuits the secret societies everything I've been lecturing about on my channel like I said don't equate Kenny to Zeitgeist I go a lot deeper and make more sense of things than Zeitgeist did. Zeitgeist plagiarized a lot of other researchers. That's all they did. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my lecture on the Gospel of Nazarene and the true teachings of Jesus. Because, um, like I think, I think one of the things is, is God is everywhere. He can be worshipped everywhere. He's within every living thing throughout the universe. Secondly, we don't need the Vatican. We don't need a monetary system. You don't need to donate 10% of your income to the church. I, I've shown that black magic pagan rituals are going on within the Vatican with the Jesuits, with like their excommunicate rituals and all that. And we know that the Vatican is nothing more than Rome. So don't blame Catholics for anything. You blame Rome for this. That you, you're going up against Rome and the Jesuits. Now, well, the Jesuits are just one secret society of Rome. Rome controls all the secret societies through the proxy of what used to be Babylon, Mystery Babylon. And I cover Babylon also. Those lectures are on my channel. And where does this all go back to? Straight out of Babylon. 
the Sumerians, the Anunnaki, the reptilians. And that's, I'm leaving at that. So yes, I love Jesus. And yes, I was born Catholic and I don't care. Because if there's anyone that's going to help me in my life now, I'd rather turn to Jesus than like go become a Freemason or a pagan. Who do you think I'm going to get better results from, right? So I have Jesus in my heart and pagans on my mind. And I'm going to bring down Babylon, right? <laughs> Philosophical Kenny, you like it? Any questions or comments, leave them below. And um, just watch out for my Mithra lecture tomorrow. It's going to be quite interesting. Also, I have a movie review to, to do tomorrow, which is going to be pretty fun. And until we speak again, this is Kenenigan. And leave you with the picture of Jesus here. <laughs> Instead of Rome. Let's get that. Yeah, let's get that taste out of our mouth. Any questions or comments, leave them below. And until we speak again, this is Kenenigan, and take care.